Hello and welcome to Faith and Friends. Welcome also to the month of April. Do you guys know what we're celebrating in, in the month of April? Well, Easter was in March, so according to my book, we don't have another real holiday till May or July. Is it National Safe Snowmobiling in the North Arctic Month? <laughs> no, that's February. Ah. I think that's July. No, I'm kidding. Some of our holidays that we find when we research seem to be a little interesting, but there are some important ones in the month of April, including Autism Awareness Month, Financial Literacy Month, but April is also National Kite Month. So let's go fly a kite. Send it soaring, soaring, soaring up over the air. Hey, that's a really neat rhyme. I wonder, did you just create that yourself? No, it's from Mary Poppins. <laughs> Straw Hat Month. And then this one. I, I knew about this one. National I got an email about Grilled it. Cheese Sandwich Month. Mm -hmm. Now, is that with or without the iron? You know, the old grilled cheese with the iron. Maybe we should like try it out on Faith and Friends. What do you think we do? I want to try and make the grilled cheese donuts. Grilled cheese donuts? They have these in Cincinnati, yeah. Grilled cheese donuts. Got the donut on the outside and the cheese, different types of cheese. You can put different syrups on it as well. It sounds Sir terrible. Syrup Like a blueberry is it capote. Served hot? Yeah. So it's almost it like melts. a beignet. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. Wow. That's our next food segment, I believe. That could be. That Gotta do it in April, know. though. <laughs> Only in April. Can't eat grilled cheese the rest of the. Month. I like that. No, you that you can. Month. You just have to be more aware of it in oh, April. As we yeah. awareness. We move awareness. into the fourth month. It also means we are moving into the next character trait found in 2 Peter 1, 5 through 7. We'll also talk about that in just a moment. But first, a sneak peek at what's happening on today's show. Two electricians with Midwest Electric recently returned from a trip to Guatemala to install electricity in homes of native villagers. Hear their inspiring stories coming up later on in today's Faith and Friends. Look forward to that. Also very inspiring to witness so many kids raise their hands to accept Jesus at a Calvary Chapel of Praise Big Easter Egg Hunt. That plus the helicopter Easter Egg Drop which took place <laughs> at Lima Baptist helicopter? Temple. Yes. Well, and the helicopter the eggs, got pretty close and then the eggs to the ground. <laughs> fell out as well. It was an amazing sight that you'll get to see right here. But now let's take a look at our verse, one that we hope by now is very familiar to you from 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 5 through 7. But also for this very reason, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue. To virtue, knowledge. To knowledge, self-control. To self-control, perseverance. To perseverance, godliness. To godliness, brotherly kindness. And to brotherly kindness, love. Of course, throughout March, we focused on that important topic of self-control. Now we're moving into a focus on perseverance. 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 What what would you guys say perseverance means? Well, I think how do you persevere? When you look at this scripture is and we've talked about this before is how each of those tributes attributes kind of build upon each other. And and when you have self-control, I think it is a little bit easier mm -hmm. to persevere. I mean, the fact of the matter is we're all going to go through times that are difficult. None of us are promised uh, an easy life. I don't think any of us really would necessarily would want an easy life. But if you have strong faith, it does allow you to go through some of these strong, the, these difficult times. It brings us, sustains us through the valleys, and, and, and certainly you can find strength in the Word of God. Absolutely. Many character attributes. I get my definitions from VeggieTales because that's what my kids like to watch, and I do as well. But Sumo of the Opera said perseverance is to keep on keeping on, and I think that's a good way to think of it. I think every single one of us can have a long list of situations that have happened in our lives, maybe either were done to us or we made decisions that created those situations that really put us in binds, really difficult situations. And it can be really hard to know how to go on. Just last week on Facebook, a, a girl that I knew when she was growing up, she lost her kids um, in a custody situation. And to her, that was it, that was the end. Mm -hmm. But you know what, some people wrote in and they gave her biblical encouragement and she said, okay, I will keep going even though this is hmm. really, really hard. Wow. Yeah. Well, if you drive past TV44 this week, you will see the words, he is risen, he is risen indeed on our electric sign, even though we're past Easter. It's worth celebrating every day of the year. That message isn't up there on accident because we want you to keep focused on that each and every day. And likely the recent Easter weekend is still having its effect on many who came to two kid-focused Easter events at area churches. Andy starts with the first of two, a helicopter egg drop at Lima Baptist Temple, representing this week's OIO in the community segment.
There were kids, and kids, and more kids. There were eggs, and there was a helicopter. Hundreds gathered together for the first Lima Baptist Temple helicopter egg drop. And wow, did that helicopter drop a lot of eggs. And had a bunch of our people, volunteers, especially our senior adults, give them kudos for stuffing all these eggs, about 10 to 12,000 eggs today with candy and some other things. So many eggs, in fact, that the chopper couldn't carry them all at once without exceeding those weight limits. So round one came and went. Wow, those kids grabbed the eggs quickly and then back to the starting line they went and the helicopter returned for round number two. 10,000 eggs, how quickly they disappeared into the baskets of eager children. But in the end, this project wasn't really about the eggs. It was about people gathering them together to share the most important message of all. But we wanted to really advertise our Easter services and we try to do everything with social media. But inside the eggs, I was telling you earlier, is inside the eggs we do a neon strip of paper which shows our two Easter services, which are 9-11 Sunday, and also a website uh, to link to go there for Easter invite. So it is for that. It's just a great thing for the community. People are always coming on Easter. Sometimes they only come Easter and Christmas. So we try to make the best of it to make sure people do come and hear a great message. And on a day when the helicopter experience brought many in our community together, Pastor Al looks for ongoing ways his church can continue to reach out. We have uh, really stepped up our children's ministry into the apartments around. We have a, a Jubilate Kids Choir where we started with none, about 65, and we'll be having a musical Mother's Day for that at our 10 o'clock Bible study hour. Uh, we also have a big Awanas program here on Wednesday nights, and we still, you know, the vans and the bus ministry still works, and we still have vans running, people volunteering, bringing the kids in, all colors, all age, all backgrounds, and we love it. The Lima Baptist Temple event was at 11 a.m., and then at 1 p.m. that very same day, Calvary Chapel of Praise hosted their annual Big Egg Hunt. Eggs were normal size, and as Jennifer reports, these eggs were only a minor part of the big plans. It was a good problem at Calvary Chapel of Praise the day before Easter. Extra chairs had to be set up, and that still wasn't enough to accommodate all of the people attending the annual Big Easter Egg Hunt. While nearly 6,000 eggs sat untouched outdoors, a packed sanctuary became a party-like atmosphere because there was a lot worth celebrating. There were puppets, and music, and even a dancing dog. Four blessed youngsters won bicycles, but the most important message involved a man named Jesus and what he did for you and me. They hung him on a cross, and it wasn't a pretty sight. Jesus Christ, it is finished, and we did last. Dozens of hands were raised as Sweeney led the crowd in a prayer of repentance. So many of these families were drawn to Calvary Chapel for an Easter egg hunt, but would be going home with so much more. You know, we have so much going on in our community locally, and so an opportunity to hear good news is really important, especially at the young age um, where my generation went to Sunday school a lot, but today that, that dynamic has changed, and so our kids don't have quite the opportunities as I did, and so what a better way at Easter time and, and getting candy and eggs, you know, to share the story of Jesus and his powerful resurrection. And then it was time to venture out into the sunshine and those thousands of eggs. In no time, the eggs were gone, gathered up by hundreds of kids on site. Next came special prizes and 500 sack lunches. What a glorious afternoon to share the resurrection truth of Jesus with the Lima community. We take our time to pray for every person that would come in. Um, we provide the opportunity to meet and greet with, with families that we wouldn't necessarily get the opportunity um, to come into the house of God and to meet 
people that are real, that uh, accept them, that are ex all inclusive. And so um, that's the opportunity that we see before us. Here in America, we pretty much take for granted electricity. We use it for cooking, to brighten our rooms, charge our cell phones, power our computers, and for so much more. Well, for 332 villagers in rural Guatemala, that thing we take for granted is now changing their lives. Chad Klaus and Andrew Recker recently returned from a volunteer work trip to Guatemala. Both are from Midwest Electric and traveled with 15 other Ohio Electric Cooperative employees to extend electrical services to residents of La Soledad. Definitely inspiring stories and amazing experience that we're going to hear from now with Chad and Andrew. And, and Chad, let, let's start off with you. Tell us about this village in Guatemala. It's, we're, we're used to some smaller towns in West Central Ohio, but I'm not sure a whole lot of towns that remote as where you went to in Guatemala. Yeah, uh, we were up at the top of the mountain. Uh, the village is maybe uh, two miles wide, two to three miles wide. Uh, but I guess it's kind of spread out more than you would think around here, you know, uh, two miles with houses on top of, on top of each other here. There's kind of spread out uh, what I would consider uh, shanties more than, you know, you would consider a home around here. But uh, very, very, very uh, low poverty. Uh, the, the houses were uh, old. Uh, they did have some new new houses, but there was a lot of old houses there, a lot of people that have uh, put a lot of hard hard work through the years and have made it their own village up at the top of the mountain. And Andrew, I mean, it just, it, it just blows my mind to think that here in 2016, we could be talking about a place in this world that didn't have electricity, yet that is what you were dealing with. Absolutely, they said that uh, roughly 20% of Guatemala does not have electricity, which is hard to believe, especially living here in the States, you just take that for granted that you flip a switch and there'll be something there. Chad, it was about a two week trip that really impacted a lot of the lives. What were some of the ways you saw electricity change these people's lives? Uh, actually seeing the electricity, uh, we were there when we turned it on, but some of the things that they're gonna buy to actually uh, help their lives uh, be easier uh, we didn't get to see the, that there, but uh, one, one, one example would be the, 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 the main area that we stayed in. The first, light that, uh, the first night that the lights were on, the kids were playing soccer, uh, you know, out in the dark, which I would say was, is not normal for them. So as soon as the, they saw that the lights were on and they could play in the dark, they, the, they went out and played soccer. How much time. educating did you guys have to do to the villagers? explaining what, what this was and what this could mean to them. Yeah, quite a bit. Uh, we actually had an inside uh, crew that took care of wiring the houses. Uh, we all ended up making it there, but there was one crew specifically that had set up their own, I would say, electric code for, the, for that village. Uh, they went in and had to basically train a group of villagers to once we left, be able to maintain the uh, inside wiring of the homes. So we're hoping that us training those uh, individuals, that they'll be able to pass that on to the rest of the, uh, the villagers. And Andrew, I suppose being in, in the mountains of Guatemala, there probably were some moments where you just kind of take, take a step back and really just take what you were doing and just kind of take in all that you were seeing. Absolutely. It's, it's very easy to get wrapped up in what you're doing and every once we actually talked about that every once in a while you just need to step back and if nothing else enjoy the scenery it was absolute amazing views you can't even begin to describe what it actually looked like chad i think one of the other interesting parts is uh, la soledad the, the village is now a little bit in a, a higher place than w the fact they have electricity makes them a little bit more of a progressive village than the surrounding areas yeah, when they had uh, learned that they were going to be the village that we would supply power to, there was actually a lot of uh, new construction as far as homes. Uh, they hope to bring, not stores like we have here, but it's going to bring more people to the village uh, as far as uh, residents, which, which helps them out as far as uh, just their day-to-day. -day. There's more hands to help work, and yeah, so uh, it will. 
one of those residents, uh, an elderly woman, really made an impact on, on you and on this entire trip. Tell us about this, this older lady that you guys met. Yeah, uh, one of the crews, uh, every evening we had a debriefing that we were able to uh, share stories throughout the day. Uh, one of the crews that was uh, going around when we actually turned everybody on, we had to turn main breakers on in every house. And when they turned that main breaker on, uh, they said the elderly woman uh, w was moved to tears because she was hoping that this time would, would come in her lifetime, but not sure that it would come in her lifetime. So uh, also around her was uh, some of her family. So this, uh, the, the elderly woman, once her lights was on, she immediately went to the houses of her family to be there so that she could be in that moment with them when they got their lights turned on for the first time. Wow, amazing. Andrew, what are you going to take away from this trip, this experience? It's just a, a humbling experience. You don't realize what you have until you see people that have nothing. Um, it, it's just hard to, to understand. You know, the biggest decisions that we make around here is what you're going to do for the weekend or where you're going to go out to eat. We're there. They have to make decisions that quite literally affects their survival. So it, it definitely puts things in perspective a little bit more. All right, thank you very much, Chad Klaus and Andrew Recker from Midwest Electric, back from an inspiring trip from Guatemala. Well, some say music, particularly Christian music, is inspiring. And late last month, Christian singer Natalie Grant performed at the Nice Swanger Performing Arts Center. Andy and his wife Leah were among those in attendance. Andy Lynch with Natalie Grant. Welcome to Ohio. Do you enjoy driving the country, seeing all the different sights? I do. I think it is really true that there's beauty in every spot, no matter how small or how big. Um, and it's fun. I've got my daughters here with me, so it's a lot of fun. <laughs> Speaking of your daughters, Glimmer Girls, you know, what was it like writing those books kind of, you know, with them in mind? Well, we actually kind of wrote them together, oh, cool. um, which was really fun because I think oftentimes being a musician and sometimes they come with me, sometimes they don't. And oftentimes it's what I'm called to do and we're always finding way, trying to find ways that they can be involved. So writing these books together, they came up with the plot, with the character names, with the book titles. So it really was kind of a family effort, which was a lot of fun. What do they think when they get to go on tour with you and, and go to different spots? What's that like for them? Well, my youngest daughter just informed me, no, it, you're not about to go in and do your show. We're about to go in and do our show. So they like it a lot. They definitely love it. I mean, obviously, if you get tired um, at it, one of my daughters isn't feeling too great tonight. Mm. But it, there's nothing like doing it like a family. So, you know, I, I wouldn't trade it for the world. <laughs> you created Hope for Justice International. Just why was that on your heart and why is it important to you? Um, you know, I mean, it was an issue I learned about on Law & Order. I never thought I would say Law & Order changed my life, but <laughs> it did. Um, you know, they did an episode on something called human trafficking in 2004. Nobody was talking about it. Now it's become a very trendy cause, thank God, because things get done when things become trendy. But to learn that there are more slaves in the world today than at any other point in our history, most of them under the age of 18. I wasn't even a mother when I founded the organization, but now with a mother's heart, I mean, those are someone's daughters, and, and it's the most unthinkable evil and I feel like it's the church's job to be on the front lines of this fight so we appreciate you having you here thank you very much thank you. You bet. Well, some of you who attended that concert got to meet Natalie Grant but all of you have the opportunity to meet Dr. Trudy Pieper later this month the author of prevention is the cure for cancer five easy steps is coming to Lima for a book signing the date is Saturday April 30th 11 to 1 at Gifts of Joy on Allentown Road in Lima You've been enjoying Dr. Trudy's health tips the past couple of years on Faith and Friends. Mm -hmm. Much of the information shared here can also be found in her book, including information about green tea. Today's Lost Creek Care Center Health Moment, Trudy talks with Zach about switching from coffee to tea, the difference between green tea and black tea. Well, Dr. Trudy, this is especially applicable to me today. I am a big coffee drinker, so calling all you coffee drinkers out there, a message for you. We're talking about teas, black and green tea today. That's right, black and green tea, <laughs> very healthy for you. Yeah, compared to the coffee, which I was just telling you earlier, after reading through some of the information you provided, I was inspired enough to ditch the coffee, at least for today, <laughs> I don't know, hopefully long term, and drink some black tea, um, because there are many health benefits, isn't there? There are, and with the coffee, it is so acidic. Mm -hmm. So that's another issue besides the fact that it's high in caffeine. Yeah. It causes more acid in your body, which changes the pH, which makes you more likely to have disease. Yeah. So switch to the teas. <laughs> well, you do say here it's gaining ground here in the USA that tea is, is gaining ground versus coffee, that is. 
that there are 15,000 cups drank every second? Every second, that's 500 billion cups of tea oh my every year. <laughs> and as we know, in our country, black tea is more popular. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, tea, I just qualify that just a little bit. You can drink your black tea, but it does, should not be sweet tea. Okay, This is difference. Yeah, there's a <laughs> difference there, because then it takes away all the benefits. Sure. So if you can learn to drink it maybe with even just a little honey or with a little stevia, mm -hmm. that's better for you. Uh, but, and then green tea is more popular in the East or in the Asian countries. Okay, and so let's talk about the differences. What are the differences between those and where does tea come from? Well, tea, they both black and green tea and white tea for that matter, all come from the same plant. Really? The difference is the processing of that. Hmm. And with that, they are both have um, um, oxidation process, but the black tea is fermented. Okay. And that makes the black rich color that it has. Mm -hmm. Through that process, though, that changes the amount of caffeine, and that's one of the biggest differences between uh, the taste of the two, okay. is that, that black tea has more caffeine. And you're looking at more like 200 to 240 to 250 milligrams of caffeine per cup versus green tea or white tea, mm -hmm. which has 30 to 35 milligrams wow. of caffeine per cup. So a pretty significant difference it there is. between. And so you were telling me that black tea is maybe a better uh, transitional tea if you are coming from the coffee, with, which is of course high in caffeine, that the black tea may be easier to uh, transition to than the green tea. Absolutely, I would start that way than going to the green tea because then you may have those little caffeine headaches. <laughs> sure, <laughs> sure. To do that. Well, we talked about there are health benefits and antioxidants specifically within tea. Yes, they are. Um, there's something called catechins, hmm. which are found, and they're more in green tea than in black tea, but they are powerful uh, cancer fighters. Oh. So for one reason, if you want to uh, fight cancer, drink green tea. Black tea also has them, but not mm -hmm. as many. And uh, the, as far as the ph phytonutrients that are found in both black tea and green tea, weigh 10 times more than are in vegetables. So oh, wow. green tea will give you as many uh, cancer fighting as the vegetables will. Okay. But they both have benefits. You know, mm -hmm. So again, it goes back to taste. Mm -hmm. We found that with hearts, you have a 21% less uh, chance of having a stroke if you drink wow. either black or green tea. Um, that's with three cups of tea per day. Okay. Um, it also helps their antiviral and uh, antibacterial, so it can help anything from having a cold or flu to cancer hmm. to do that. It also aids your digestive tract. The tannins in the tree, with the tea, which give it its color, uh, will has therapeutic effect and will help with any kind of gastric uh, or intestinal illnesses that you may have. Okay. And you go even further into bones, stress relief, all of these benefits? Absolutely. And I know that uh, some people are concerned a little bit about the caffeine in the bones, but actually sure. it's the antioxidants and phytonutrients will actually build stronger bones. And some of the gals I have who ask to osteoporosis, we're putting them on tea is one of the first things that oh, we okay. do. Stress theanine is an amino acid that's found in tea and that actually has wonderful control over stress. It's also good for neurotransmitters to make connections in your brain. Hmm. And finally, I like tea because it gives me increased energy. Okay. And with that, it enhances the blood flow to the brain. Sure, sure. And you say unlike um, coffee, which is higher caffeine, well, you won't get that same result. Right, and uh, withdrawal is not jitterous. If I forget to drink my tea, I don't have that <laughs> coffee buzz. Sure. Well, thank you so much for illustrating the benefits of tea, and I'm hoping to stay off of the coffee for now. You do that. <laughs> thank you, Dr. You're Trudy. welcome. Well, exercise, something Dr. Trudy recommends, is a way for better health and cancer prevention. 94 area runners and walkers accomplished just that during the second annual Neighborhood Relief Thrift Store, Good Friday 5K, put on by FCA, held Good Friday, March the 25th at the Allen County Fairgrounds. The day actually began with a .5K for five elementary school runners, and then the rest of the field took flight with Bath senior Wyatt Stahl winning the race and Parkway junior Caleb Rollins coming in second. Salina had the top three female finishers as Bulldogs coach Dan Otten did a phenomenal job once again putting on the race. Once all those runners were across the finish line, 24-7 youth, the student band from Only Believe Ministries, played some worship songs, ushering in former Toledo Rocket track and field standout Herb Ford, the pastor now at Cornerstone Harvest Church here in Lima. He shared the gospel, which produced fruit as a number of students and adults dedicated their lives to Christ. It was a special way to start Good Friday. It was a great concert after, a fellowship with other Christian athletes around the area, and at this point I'm really not sure because I'm dying. 
I'm more excited this year because this year I wasn't as sick as I was last year. And I believe that with swimming and running during the winter, I'm in much better shape now. All in all, the morning raised scholarships to send students to FCA Leadership Camp. That'll take place July 11th through the 13th, involving students from the Toledo area, the Wauseon Defiance area, and our area here in District 8. The camp's going to take place at Liberty Center. You can learn more by contacting me at alinch at fca.org or by calling us here at the TV station. Sounds like it was another great event. It was. It was cold, but it was a wonderful morning. <laughs> well, if you run, you stay warm. That's the point. They were still cold. <laughs> Well, if you haven't noticed, we certainly hope you start noticing this week. The green logo is back. We've been having it here on TV 44 recently. It now matches the grass outside. Have you noticed the vibrant colors that we're getting outside? I mean, apparently that's a result of all the rain. It's true. We have to mow at our house already, which I'm not complaining, but it's, it's nice out there. I'm glad I don't have to mow. You don't have to mow either, do you? You guys are welcome <laughs> to come over to my house and mow if you just want to get some practice. And, and, and take that experience <laughs> away from, from you and the girls? I, I don't think that's Actually, be my fair. husband does all the mowing. He had to buy this super awesome lawnmower, and he has, for some reason, never taught me to use it. That's okay with everybody. <laughs> everybody wins. Well, the TV44 <laughs> Spring to Life campaign, everybody wins as well. Be watching for the special green logo that you've been seeing. Use it as a reminder that there's new growth in this season of spring, and just the same. There's new growth available in Christ. We have a goal to raise $75,000 between now and Mother's Day. Every dollar invested in TV44 is in turn used to reach the region for Jesus Christ. If you've been thinking of giving to TV44, now is a great time to do so. No gift is too small nor too large. You can donate securely at WTLW.com. You can donate by mail, over the phone, or in person. Also consider signing up for automatic monthly withdrawal. It's a safe and reliable way to continue to partner with TV44 every month of the year. Take a moment to say thank you to some of you who have already joined in the campaign. You get a $50 gift from Kenton, $45 from Bell Fountain. It says it's God's gift. $10 from a couple who um, look here in Lima, $44 in St. Mary's, 20 of that is extra. Oh no, wait a second. $44 normal pledge, $20 extra for the spring campaign. Thank you so much for that little bit of extra. I also want to say thank you to Maxine Worthington of Waynesfield, also Steve Settlemeyer here in Lima. Thank you so much for investing in eternity through what God's doing here at TV44. And a final look at our scripture spotlighting the word perseverance, our faith challenge focus topic of the month. Andy? Second Peter fifth or 1, 5 through 7, be also for this very reason, giving all diligence adds to your faith virtue. To virtue, knowledge, to knowledge, self-control, to self-control, perseverance, to perseverance, godliness, to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, love. Certainly things we're all striving to do in our lives, to give those away to others, to have that peace inside of us that only comes from God. Thanks for joining us this week. We'll see you next time.